Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and I'm going to be going over the UFC card for this Saturday. And usually what I'm able to do are three separate videos. One where I go over the best plays. Uh, the second where I do an MMA betting breakdown uh, from a contrarian perspective. And third is when I do a full lineup construction video where I use the sims and I try to figure out you know different techniques to um, try to take down that big 150 max tournament. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do any more content throughout the course of the week after today because I'm going to be uh, away. But uh, I do want to get something out. So I'm going to try to combine everything into one video here. Now, again, there's it's certainly not ideal, um, but uh, I'll try to touch on uh, aspects of all three components, the betting, the best plays, and where I think we could do a little lineup construction business. Uh, I also do have to apologize. I mean, there is actually one fight that still isn't even priced yet, um, but we can certainly speculate as to what it should be and what it could be. And interestingly, you know, what where it started out early in the week is it kind of a 10 fight card is now going to end up being a full 13 fight card. So um, very, uh, um, for, I mean, listen, there's like a couple, you know, four or five women's fights, which don't rate to finish. There's, uh, not the greatest name value, but it is 13 fights, which means that you do need to play for upside. Um, and I think there's a couple of fights where you can kind of key uh, both fighters and we'll, we'll, we'll get into that. So let, let's talk about actually the fight that's not priced yet before I forget. So we, we're going to have Umar Sai versus Antonio Tricoli. <coughs> Excuse me. Antonio Tricoli was replaced by George uh, Tokos. So you're going to have size a three point, you know, like a three to one favorite. And just based on where everybody else is priced here. So you have Yanez at minus 400. You have Gatto at minus 300. And you already have those priced at 90. You have Gatto at 9,400. And actually Yanez is cheaper 9,300. Well, why is no one all the way up at 9,500? No one is 9,500. Oh, because he's minus 475. Sorry. So with no one at minus 475, Gatto minus 320. She just came down a little bit. So I would imagine that Psy is going to end up being, well, this is the problem. Psy has to be 9,100 because they don't price people at the same prices. So uh, Umar Sai is, <laughs> at the end of the day, is probably going to end up being the best play on the slate because Dakota is 9,200 with very little finishing upside. Yanez is 9,300 with the same, well, actually that's not true. Not, he's He's got a better win odds. He's got to have a strong inside the distance line. So I guess it's not that that egregious to put Sar at 9,100, beside 9,100. But that's where we're going to put him. So he'll end up being 9,100, and his opponent will be, you know, the reverse, I guess, 60, whatever that would be, 7,100 uh, 70, 70, or so. Yeah, 9,100, 7,100. Um, okay, speaking of which, you know, Emily Ducote, she's minus 340, but, but you look at her – inside the distance line, it's like, it's hopeless. You know, she's, you know, minus, excuse me, plus 400 inside. I mean, she's a complete stone fade. And Demopolis, she first of all doesn't win often enough to be playable. You have Dakota, who's not going to be popular, so you don't get any leverage. And she doesn't really have a lot of finishing upside. So this first fight is going to be just kind of a stone pass. Um, Haile Alatang versus Clayton Rodriguez. Um, all right. So, so what it has going for it is that it's in the mid range. Um, but there are other fights that are in the mid range as well that are going to look uh, just as good, if not better. Sort these by fight number. Yeah, there you go. Okay, one second. Let's 
So we have 8,600, 7,600. We'll take a look at the inside the distance line here. When you have, I mean, Alatang, excuse me, um, Rodriguez plus 350, Alatang plus 300. I mean, neither of these guys are really any good inside the distance. And as far as wrestling upside, I guess you could say there's marginal upside for takedowns, but nothing really major. So this is going to be definitely a kind of a second kind of a second tier option. As far as betting goes so far, I don't really I haven't seen too much from either of these fights to have any one real lean. We're going to get to one in a minute though. Um Pierre Rodriguez versus Ariane Carnalosi. All right, so this one could have some action. Uh, both these fighters are very active. Uh, Carnalosi specifically, I mean, she really tries to get things going. Uh, she doesn't have much of a gas tank, though. So this fight could really deliver regardless of who wins. You look at the, the odds here, it's minus, you know, minus 220, something like that for Rodriguez. And it's pretty, pretty fair as far as the money line goes. Uh, let's look at the inside the distance line. I have a feeling it's going to be understated. Let's see. Yeah, wow. Carnalosi inside plus 500. I was thought it'd be better than that. But I guess not. And Rodriguez inside plus 275. That's pretty poor. Um, there, There's definitely some takedown upside here. And I think there's going to be a, kind of a lot of action overall. I think this fight is probably... I think this, this inside the distance line is a little light. Um, so not that my opinion matters too much as far as that goes, but I don't know, like if this end fight does end up being low owned, if very few people end up talking about it throughout the course of the, of the week, I, I would definitely play both sides of this. Uh, it's not the top of the list, but certainly I think she, this fight certainly has a lot of activity that, uh, could produce good scores. Uh, as far as the, um, as far as the betting breakdown, I already see this happening. You know, you're, you're going to see everybody talk about Carnalosi, you know, the fact that the only time that she ever really won was against um, Nav Liang, who got cut. So that's factoring into the line a little bit. You're seeing her off of two years um, or so, and people will be suspecting that was because of, of, of USADA suspensions because she, you know, she certainly looks like she could be on steroids, whatever that means. Um and then you're hearing also that she's got back surgery <laughs> instead. So uh, there's probably going to be an overwhelming majority of steam on Rodriguez. So I think that by the end of the day, uh, Carnalosi is probably going to be a good uh, good money line bet. So I would definitely recommend that. Uh, Abus Magomedov versus Worley Alves. Um Okay, first of all, let's just let's just worry about sorry about that. I just paused that for a second. Um but let's just take a look at the metrics here in the in the in the Abbas fight here. First of all, he's minus 255 mm -hmm. and nine thousand. That's perfectly reasonable. Look at this. The Cardinals are starting to make things interesting over here. Interesting. Um, anyway, inside the distance line on, on Abus, I mean, minus 165 inside the distance is, is, is amazingly strong. So, um, you know, this is obviously one of the elite favorites on the board. Um, and it's certainly worth playing. Now, Worley Alves, his inside the distance line is going to be, I imagine, pretty poor, um, Let's see. Alves inside that plus 355, plus 400. All right, it's not the end of the world. I, I guess in 150 max, you could you could take a shot at some of him. I mean, considering a boost is probably gonna be probably gonna be pretty popular. You know, so I do think that that Alves um I mean, I do think that Alves should be uh, should be considered a kind of a decent punt here. All right, uh, Melissa Gatto versus Tamiris Vidal. 
this is a very surprising inside the distance line here. Um, I, I just presume that this was going to look like the Dakota fight. Um, but she actually has a pretty good inside the distance line here at plus 105. That's pretty surprising to me. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, that's, that's, listen, it's still not great for her, whatchamacallit, for her, uh, for her price. I mean, she's 9,400 and you certainly need a little bit more than that. Um, but it's better than I thought it would be. I mean, if you end up getting Gatto at really, really low ownership, maybe you can play her. Ugh, there's so, there's so many better plays. We're, we're, we're going to call her a pass for now. Um, and as far as betting here, I mean, I probably just bet her inside the distance because what all I'm hearing, like at least so far, is that how is Melissa Gatto minus 300 over anybody? And Vidal, she, you know, she was a former soccer player. She's an athlete, things like that. She disappointed in her last one. But all I'm hearing is how wide this line is. Um, and usually when you, you hear that kind of stuff, the line's wide for a reason. So I think the Gatto inside the distance makes a lot of sense. So we're going to keep track of some of our bets here. So we're going to probably be betting Carnalosi money line. We'll probably be betting Gatto inside the distance. All right, Umar Sai versus George Tokos, as I mentioned earlier. He's going to be 9,100, and, and I'm just kind of guessing his inside the distance line here, you know, because he is 9-0. I don't know. He's got a submission, a decision, two decisions. M m maybe his inside the distance line is not that great, but but I am hearing that he's has, he carries with him a great deal of, of, uh, of grappling upside. So I think that once, once we get a little better sense of what this line's all about, I'll be able to to deal with this a little better, but I'm not going to be around, but I'm pretty sure this has got to be a really strong play. You know, uh, I have a feeling also that his line is going to go higher just because Tokos is taking this at very short notice. And I don't know. I, I, I think at the end of the day, Sai is going to end up being a very, very strong play. And I don't really know much about the Toko, so I can't really comment on it. Um, so no opinion there. As far as betting goes, I mean, again, I have nothing because no one's really talked about this fight yet because it was just made. All right, Tom Nolan versus Victor Martinez. So big favorite, a big price. You have 9,500. For 9,500, I mean, you better knock him out in the first round, right? And you look at this, yeah, I mean, inside he's minus 250, which is sort of what you want to see. But let's see his first round. Yeah, I guess so. At plus one hundred five in the first round, so it's it's kind of hard to deny based on the metrics, you know the the how good of a play it is. At, but ninety five hundred, I mean, you you're not really leaving yourself too much room for error, you know, to to say the least. You know, so so be 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 cautious because I don't really see too many takedowns in his. Arsenal, so he's going to really need that first round KO, and might not even that might not be enough. So be be cautious with this one. And and, and as far as betting goes, I mean, I'm going to have to recommend Martinez here because no, 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 hold on, I'm going to have to recommend something here, and and I'm going to tell you what it is. So even though Nolan got not got knocked out in the first round, people are really willing to forgive this. I don't know, man. People, it's very forgiving of people. I'll say that. Um, but this is what you're going to hear. Victor Martinez, he got knocked out, knocked out by Jordan Levitt, and Jordan Levitt doesn't knock out anybody. So if he's going to get knocked out by Jordan Levitt, then certainly he's going to get knocked out by Tom Nolan, who, as you will see, has not, has all kinds of first round chaos. Um, so, uh, there's two ways you're going to be able to play this fight from a betting perspective. If you have it in you, you could play Victor Martinez plus the four to one or something like that. But if you really want to be sneaky, you'll play Nolan by submission. Um, uh, the idea is that, you know, first of all, everybody's expecting the knockout. So that that line's going to be ridiculous and no one's going to play the submission. But you think about it. I mean, he did get knocked out in his first round, in, you know, in the first round in his first fight here. And um, 
he might not you know, throw caution to the wind with respect to getting into a slug fight, the slug fest. He might try to go for the grappling here and his opponent has been submitted before. So um, I think Nolan by submission is actually a pretty good bet here. Uh, as far as DFS goes, yeah, I mean, Nolan's his, you know, his metrics are strong, but again, he's being priced for perfection here. So just kind of be careful. All right. Uh, Angela Hill versus uh, Luana uh, Pinheiro. Um, okay. Mid-range fight. So it has that going for it. The inside the distance line is extremely poor, as you might imagine here. You, you take a look. You have, I mean, I think both of them are plus 500 inside at least, right? Yeah. I mean, Pinheiro plus 450 and Hill plus 600. And, you know, <laughs> Does either one have takedown upside? That that is actually that's a, that's a pretty good question. Okay, I mean we have to like dive into this a little bit. I mean Pinero does have five takedowns a few fights ago, and had two takedowns against Sam Hughes as well, and a takedown against Amanda Hebas. And Angela Hill, you know she she was able to stuff, I mean, all the takedowns really against Lupita Godinez, which was pretty surprising and route to a victory. She beat Emily, uh, Emily Dakota. I mean, she's been, she's been great, you know, and, and what, it, what she does do is throw up usually like kind of a lot of volume here. Eight, well, 85, 182 against Dakota. That was pretty strong, but she's not a really big scorer here. So I think that this fight is probably a dud with respect to, um, to DFS. Um, as far as betting goes, though, I, I'm definitely interested here. I think I think Pinheiro is definitely the side. I think at the end of the day, by the time you get to the end of the um, the end of the uh, of the Twitter wars, you're just going to see like everybody on Angela Hill. I mean, she's the professional fighter. The age doesn't bother her. All she does is win, you know. And, and I think that she's going to get a little bit too much love. So I do like the Pinheiro side, just kind of the money line here. But as far as DFS goes, it's probably a poor fight. Adrian Yanez versus Vincent uh, Vincent Salvador. Boy, oh boy. Uh, Adrian Yanez, for someone who just got clocked two fights in a row, people have a lot of confidence. Um, so he's, he's 9,300. And his price is like, he's like 400, minus 400. And they really want it. I, I, they must really know what they're doing, putting him against this guy. He's, I mean, Giannis is literally off of two straight, like first round, like crushers. <laughs> and he's, uh, they, they really, they really think he's going to get it done. That's the best I can, um, that's the best I can describe this. And you look at his inside the distance line too. It's like minus 150 or something, uh, minus 165. And let's see the first round plus 200. That's not that great. You know, and, and if he doesn't get him out of there in the first round, uh, it's tough for him to get there at this price. So uh, I think, again, I think you're walking the tightrope with guys like him and you're walking the tightrope with guys like Tom Nolan. In, in a weird way, I think the Tom Nolan play might be, I was about to say better, but I'm just speculating that he can get takedowns. I don't know if that's actually true. I just think he's probably going to be a good line. That's why I play him by submission. But um, I think the Giannis play is kind of tough to get home, man. I don't know. I think it's going to be tough. So this one is this next fight's awesome. Uh, the, actually, the next the next two, and maybe even the main event, Ramiz Brahimaj versus uh, Themba Garimbo. So both these fighters have grappling upside, and the the price is right. You have uh eighty four hundred seventy eight hundred. The line is about accurate. And look at their inside the distance lines. You have you have Garimbo plus 175, and you have Brahimaj, who actually has a better inside the distance line, even though he's the underdog. Um, I think that's going to kind of crunch a little bit later. But but nonetheless, at this price, with these inside the distance line, plus the grappling upside, I think this you have to play this fight. I mean, I think you just have to. Now, you do run the risk of you know getting into one of those wars where both people stuff everybody's takedowns and it ends up being kind of like a messier fight. But, you know, at this price, I mean, who cares? I mean, if the fight, if the fight busts and the winner only scores 80, it still might not be the end of the world. So I, I think this fight is pretty, I mean, it's pretty logical. Um, 
I don't know what people, what other people are going to say throughout the course of the week, but I'm going to have to believe that this fight and the fight next after it are the two main fights aside the main event that you're going to have to play. Um, and speaking of which, you know, Chaos Williams versus Carlston Harris. I mean, this is you, you have on the one hand. First of all, let's look at the at the prices here. You know, eighty two hundred eight k. It's it's a perfect you know middling price tag. That again, even if you're wrong about these guys finishing, a win is not the end of the world. And you look at their inside the distance lines and their paths to victory. I mean, Cass Williams is minus one. He's almost pick him to finish, and he's eighty two hundred. I mean, it's that's enormous. Um, and then on the other side, even though Harris plus two ninety is not the greatest inside, his I think I have to believe that his path to victory is going to involve at least three takedowns. You know, so so either of these fighters, if they win, they're going to be. Um, you know they're they're, they're going to rate the score really really well. Um, even William, Williams could get a decision, like the the Bedoya fight. So I guess he could score low if he wins. So I guess if I had to pick one, it would probably be Harris. But I think you play both sides of this one. I think you play both sides of the the Chaos Williams Harris fight. You play both sides of the Rob Rob Brahimaj Garimbo fight, and I think that's what you. I mean, I think that's almost too easy. Not too easy, but it's too logical. I think everybody's going to do that. I would think everybody would do that, but who knows? Remember, it's only Wednesday um, into Thursday. So maybe maybe the Twitter Twitter sphere just kind of gets uh, gets things going a little bit. All right. Um, main event, Edson Barboza versus Ron Murphy. So you look through this. First of all, again, price is right. Well, okay, so... Murphy 8,500, Barbosa 7,700. Very, you know, pretty much of a middling build. And you look at the inside the distance line, Barbosa's plus 200, Murphy plus 200. So the inside the distance line is 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 fair. I mean, it's not great for it, for either of them, but they have five rounds to work with. Um, does either of them have a lot of takedown upside? And I've seen takedowns from both these guys. I, I hesitate to, you know, suggest that it's their main path to victory. Let's just say that. Um, but with five rounds to work with, given the prices, yeah. I mean, I I think that you you you, you probably want to play it. But I have to say that if if the usual happens, and just because it's a five round fight, this gets you know a little bit too much steam. I mean, I definitely prefer these other two, like the Chaos Williams Harris fight and the Brahimaj Dembuk fight, if you know you have to get rid of one of them. Um, but I mean, to to say I'm definitely fading this fight is kind of would be kind of uh kind of irresponsible. Um, and as far as betting goes, no real lean over here. No real lean going back to the Cass Williams fight. Not too much there. Brahimaz, I, I am seeing maybe a little bit too much love for Garimbo, but but not enough for me to actually identify it as contrarian to go against it. So, uh, and the just to go back again, the 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 Yanez Salvador fight again. I don't really have too much of an opinion there. So a couple of things you could do, given what I said about the about the mid range is you do that kind of leave money on the table thing with just the mid-range guys. Like, for example, uh, let's say you want to play Carlston Harris. Like, he's only 8,000. So what you do is you build lineups with Chaos Williams in them. That's that will be cost to 8,200. And then you just swap him out for, for Harris. Um, just to get yourself a little bit different. Uh, leave just the 200 on the table again that's not that big of a deal but it's something and then likewise i mean you want to play if you have any interest in playing brahimaj just leave the 400 on the table or excuse me, the 600 on the table that would have otherwise gotten you to garimbo so that might you know get you a little different from the optimizer plays which will get you you know more to garimbo you know the uh, if you just kind of leave the math to itself and likewise barbosa you know if you want to play barbosa lineups you can consider, you know, leaving 800 on the table or so um, and kind of trick the optimizers that are competing against you 
and you know, dare them to play Murphy. You know, I mean, that's those are certainly things you could do. And then likewise, if you want to play Carnalosi, you know, this is a little trickier, but there, here you want to leave 1400 on the table. But I don't think that Carnalosi is going to be particularly popular. So it's not you have to get different anyway. Um, so those are a couple of things you could do. And just kind of review what I think are probably the OK contrarian bets here are to play maybe what what did i say actually carnalosi over rodriguez play um gato inside the distance against vidal play nolan by sub over martinez play uh pinero money line against angela hill all right those would be my those would be my uh recommendations as what i think is going to end up being contrarian and I guess that's all I have. Uh, again, unfortunately, uh, well, fortunately, <laughs> going for my son's graduation, but unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do any follow-ups with the uh, with the content. And hopefully that's enough to carry you through the weekend. Good luck, everybody.